Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now we're raising awareness for children with congenital heart disease and that is our next hot topic. Parents naturally prioritize the health of their children, ensuring regular checkups and addressing common ailments. However, some conditions often perceived as adult-only health issues can be overlooked. One of such conditions is a heart disease. While it is commonly associated with adults, it is important to recognize that children can also be at risk for several heart-related conditions. Heart disease in children, though less common, can stem from congenital defects, genetic predispositions, or lifestyle factors such as poor diet and lack of exercise. Early detection and intervention are crucial for managing these conditions and ensuring the long-term health of affected children. Raising awareness about the potential for heart disease in younger populations is essential for parents and healthcare providers alike, as it is, can lead to better prevention, timely diagnosis, and effective treatment strategies. Now, joining us to have a conversation as we raise awareness for this is Isioma Success Olubenga. She's a senior development strategist at Hospital for Humanity, and I'm also joined with Pamela Ego. She's the executive director of OB Jackson Foundation. Good morning, ladies. Thank Thank you for joining me. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. And great work. You guys are doing amazing work. So let me just start with that. Um, I'm so proud when I even heard that something like this was being done because I didn't really know so much about it. So when I heard, I was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. So let's dive right into the conversation. Children leading with congenital heart disease. Can you just tell us a little bit more about it and how common it is in Nigeria at the moment? I'll start with you, Ichema. Awesome. Thank you, Ruben. Um, congenital heart defects are structural abnormalities um, that is present within the heart of a child mm. or the great vessels within a child's heart. And um, it's really common in Nigeria. Mm. Um, we have global statistics um, between a zero to 0.8 to 1.2 percent globally um, of children that are born yearly with congenital heart defect. In Nigeria, um, we have recorded about um, so in Nigeria there's a there's a statistics of about eight million live births annually. Wow. I'm not talking about congenital. I'm talking yeah. about regular live births. Yeah. Out of that, we have about 0.1 percent of that um, um, born children mm -hmm. born with congenital, congenital. heart defect. And within that statistics, you even have about 25% of that statistics of the congenital heart defects that are very critical cases waiting to just receive surgery like tomorrow. Wow. Um, like, so it's important that people recognize that these things are re right before us in our communities and people are suffering. Some of these things are attributed as um, some strange sicknesses, mm -hmm. um, uh, but essentially they are congenital heart defects eventually when people present in the hospital and they get tested. So how do, they even, how do I even know that I have a kid who possibly could just have a congenital heart disease? What are some symptoms? Very well. Yeah, so shortness of breath, um, and then um, there's a blue blue um, lip syndrome. Oh, wow. um, so even before that time, um, some children cannot play. They cannot. Um, ex they cannot just do some. Uh, Could that be fatigue? Things. Yes, fatigue. Regular fatigue for the child. The child cannot play like other children. And then even growth growth wise, mm. the child probably is not growing as much. Mm. So maybe the child cannot eat. They throw off everything they eat. So you see that that child is not well nourished because that child cannot retain food mm. as much as they would. They just have this, all of this discomfort happening even at the same time. Mm. With that being said, I think it's important that early diagnostics come in here because Absolutely. you just highlighted the fact that some kids even need surgery like today, right? right? And that's where you are coming from, um, Pamela. You, mm -hmm. You're the executive director of a foundation, the OB mm -hmm. Jackson Foundation. And I know that you guys are helping kids with congenital heart disease, giving them surgery. So just walk us through that and how you even got to partner, because you work for Hospitals for Humanity. Mm -hmm. So how did the OB Jackson Foundation and Hospitals for Humanity come together to say, you know what, let's do this? Great, thank you. So yes, yeah, so as a foundation, our uh, ethos is we're transforming communities one life at a time. Yes, and so I got the opportunity last year to meet the founder, Dr. Shegwa Jai, and to meet the HFH team. And they align with our ethos of helping 
transform lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, so because of that, we were taking, we, we loved what they did as, as, a, found, uh, as a hospital for humanity, yeah. that they are helping people, really mm -hmm. changing lives. And so we got involved. And uh, this year, in March, we were able to screen about 60 to 70 children mm. in Anambra State, where we predominantly have a lot of our initiatives. Mm. And it was so um, uh, breathtaking and also very educational for me to see that there are people who are born with this condition and living with it in Nigeria mm -hmm. when it really doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. If you think about uh, Europe or America, children born with this condition, within the first three months of their lives, they're taken care of by surgery, and mm -hmm. that's the end of it. But here, one of the children that we, um, we, uh, we screened in, in an Amber state, she was 16 years old. Yeah. She had been living with that condition for 16 years. Mm -hmm. And since the screening, we've been fortunate to have surgeries. 19 of those uh, children had surgeries in May mm -hmm. in Abuja through the intervention of Hospital for Humanity. And they did this surgeries for free. They're doing great work. Mm. Um, each child, each child in this country, if you were to do that surgery, it cost about 10, 8 to 10 million naira. Wow. But with Hospitals for Humanity, they subsidize it. They get um, doctors from abroad to come and do it. It's subsidized at a rate of, of, of about 4 million. Oh. And it's free for the families. That's so it's amazing. great work. We're not just changing lives, but we're changing um, you know, the whole family dynamic, because mm -hmm. a lot of these families who can't afford it, it affects not just their, um, them financially, affects them emotionally, mm -hmm. spiritually. And so just to give hope to that family makes a big difference for us. Yeah. I remember um, having a conversation with you and seeing that video. And I think the first question I asked, I was like, this girl, because she was grown. I'm mm -hmm. like, this girl has congenital heart disease. Mm -hmm. And you were like, oh, yes. She yes, did. And, I'm, and I'm, I was surprised that even people who are already grown, so how come they did not detect it in that whole time? But let's talk about success rates. Mm -hmm. um, so you've done screening for about 60 to 70 people. You've done surgery for a number, which is about 19. So those 19, have they all been successful? And out of the 60, um, has, have you had any fatality as well? So yes, um, that's what, what alluding to what Isioma said, it, some of these children are in a critical state. There is a, a waiting list of over a thousand on their list right now waiting wow. for surgery. Um, out of those 60 that we screened in March, we lost one child before she was able to have surgery. Mm -hmm. And then during, um, the, during the, uh, in May, when we went to do the surgery, we lost another child. Um, so it is a critical, um, and, and a high risk yeah. also surgery, but the parents know about that. But the, the, the chance of not having surgery is even more critical for them. Yeah. So um, we're looking forward to bringing on people who can partner with us as mm -hmm. an organization, partner with HFH, raise awareness, to, to, to help as many families as possible. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about um, the government's role in all of this because you expect that the government would do something, just like how you've highlighted that in the UK, if you're born within three months, you've gotten surgery, you're fine. You don't even remember that there was something like that that happened to a family. So don't you think the government, and I'm talking to you now, Isioma, how, what role do you think the government is supposed to play in all of this, especially when it comes to reforming our health sector? Very well. Um, our health sector is really, really, you know, very um, deplorable, as mm. it were, you know, because even very common ailments, people die of very yes. common ailments in our hospitals. And um, it's saddened because this, this act, very critical um, surgeries, mm -hmm. they have to be performed on the very, you know, serious intense um, technical know-how. Mm -hmm. We have the technical know-how, no doubt, in Nigeria. We've experienced a number of drain, brain drain mm -hmm. within a couple of years now because a lot of people are leaving. However, we have the personnel because right now, Hospitals for Humanity is building capacity for our local medical healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. So while we are doing surgery, we ensure that we have a continuous learning happening within the ecosystem of our health professionals locally. Yeah. So it's almost like um, having uh, the experts that come in um, transfer skills to um, the, the locals mm -hmm. within um, our system. And that way we can, we can be assured that over the time we can have doctors 
breathe in here eventually be able to do surgeries for mm. our children and then we don't have to bring in all of those yeah. um, um, resources from abroad um, because that even costs more it does cost more it does cost more it can actually really crash the pricing however we know that this thing sometimes um, you you train people and then they leave but we've been committed over the last 10 years to continually train That's because amazing. we know that all of this is going to pay off to the to the country and mm. to Africa mm. if eventually we can have a standardized um, heart, you know, a, a center mm -hmm. where children can have free congenital heart um, surgeries at any time, at any moment. Yeah. We don't have to wait for a surgeon to come in to do it. Stay in a waiting list. Exactly, because we have over 1,500 children right now in the waiting list. And that list is ever growing. Mm -hmm. And while they are waiting for surgeries, they, they sometimes die. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we can't really do anything mm -hmm. about that because we, we, we are passionately ensuring that they get um, funding mm -hmm. for some of the things that we cannot do without having to cater for and we you know this is why you know we want governments to come on board with us we mm -hmm. want um, private organizations to come on board with us because it's a huge work yeah. it's not something that one organization or two can do mm -hmm. it's something that a lot a lot of people should come together to work with yeah. us today. so if you were to say um, advise the government on right. certain health policies that you think should be implemented let me name your best three your top three um i'm not i'm not in the medical yeah. um however um i would say that we need to create awareness more mm -hmm. for some of some of this you know there's a lot of um buzz around um maternal mortality yes. and i and i understand so i'm a mother i know but we need to also recognize that there are some things that are actual pandemics mm -hmm. right happening within our communities. Mm -hmm. They are not something to be sidelined. They are not something. So policies have to be made not only for the majors, but also for what we think or we, we kind of think they are minors, but mm -hmm. they are really major and critical to the health of the next generation. Right. right. So if we have children dying of congenital heart defects or children that cannot live their full lives mm -hmm. because they cannot get treatment, then it's a big deal yeah. for our nation. That's actually a drain of our economy development mm -hmm. within uh, you know an entire um school, uh, yeah. an entire generation of mm -hmm. people of mm -hmm. children yeah. right those children you never know what they will become right we all have our heartbeats beating within us mm -hmm. how do you think a child that cannot they don't even sometimes understand what's going on yeah. when they want to sleep they don't know whether they're going to wake up the next, next morning day. so it's a big deal for a child not to be able to be assured of their heartbeats yeah and you know, these children, they came like this. They did not do anything wrong. Right, it's right. not like lifestyle choices or yeah. things that you've done that's made you like this. This is how they've been born. Anyway, so let's just wrap it up with this. I understand that you um, you have something that you're planning tomorrow, I think, mm -hmm. like a fundraising event. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about support system. How would you want more people to, to support this cause? Because it's something that is really critical. It's something that is really serious. And if we're looking at having a generation of quality citizens in the future, mm -hmm. it starts from now of ensuring that our kids are healthy. So how can we support? How can the entire Nigerian citizens, how can we all support this cause? Right, great. Thank you. So yeah, so tomorrow we're having a fundraiser called Saving Little Hearts Fundraiser in partnership with Hospitals for Humanity. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's an OB Jackson initiative as well as H4H. H. Um, the main thing we want is to raise awareness that there is such a thing as congenital heart defects. I don't think a lot of people know, mm -hmm. um, understand. If it doesn't affect you personally, mm -hmm. then you don't really understand. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know about malaria and typhoid, but this is as much of a pandemic, really, mm -hmm. as Isyama alluded to, as the normal common ailments that we we know about. Mm -hmm. So we want to raise awareness. We also want to um, help get people to donate. It doesn't matter how much you donate, whether it's 5,000 naira or 50,000 naira, or if it's a million, it costs 4 million per child. Mm -hmm. And um, that is cheaper than a business class ticket. That is cheaper <laughs> than, in this, yes. in this times, actually mm -hmm. an economy class ticket. Mm -hmm. So I want to appeal to people to get, um, more awareness about it. They can go to our website, Obi Jackson 
foundation.org or they can go to HFH yeah. website Hospitals for Humanity, find out more about it and ways that they can get involved by volunteering, by donating and by spreading the word. All right. Um, I think that's it. Um, we'll, you know, just tell people to spread the word even more. Ensure that um, you're raising more awareness. You're letting people know about this. And if you can donate, it is important because we need our children healthy. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with us. My name is Romer Paulson. I'll see you again on Monday. Have an amazing weekend.